I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37, that's my host star you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013, now let's learn more about me. My discovery site is Kepler Space Observatory on the 20th in the month of February. The Kepler Space Telescope did make my discovery along with two other planets, Kepler 37, C and D. To date, I am the smallest planet discovered around a mid-sequence star outside the solar system I am found. I have a radius slightly bigger than your moon, but I'm slightly smaller than Mercury. You've learned this in this tune. I'm classified as an exoplanet, also a sub-Earth. This means that I'm substantially less massive than Venus and Earth. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37. That's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. I do have a diameter of 2,400 miles. I'm likely a rocky a solid surface though I have a surface temperature around 700 K the K does mean Calvin in the international system of units today I orbit my G star it's called Kepler 37 here it's similar to your sun as you can see when it did appear I orbit my parent star at 9.3 million miles away with an orbital period every 13 days if you're looking for me in the dark of the night sky you can Constellation Lyra, please stop by. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37. That's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37. That's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. I am an exoplanet. My name is Kepler 1649C. I orbit a red dwarf. Kepler, 1649, you now see, exoplanets orbit outside your solar system, that's where I hide, I am similar to Earth, I'm spun, find out more when this song is done, I was discovered in April 2020, the year by the Kepler Space Telescope and so we are clear Jeff Coughlin the director of S-E-T-I said I'm similar to planet Earth found so Far by the space telescope, Kepler at large. I'm about 300 light years from your Earth in the constellation of Cygnus. For what that's worth, I'm identified as a rocky planet. By NASA, my radius is 1.6 times that of Earth. I know that you're in awe. I take 19.5 Earth days to orbit my host star. Kepler 1649 is its name. The red dwarf in charge. I am in the habitable zone of my red dwarf star so far this is known due to the lack of information
attention on my atmosphere It is unclear If I can sustain liquid water On my surface around my sphere I am an exoplanet My name is Kepler 1649C I orbit a red dwarf Kepler 1649 You now see Exoplanets orbit outside Your solar system That's where I hide I am similar to Earth I'm spun Find out more when this song is done I am an exoplanet My name is Kepler 1649C I orbit a red dwarf, Kepler 1649, you now see, exoplanets orbit outside, your solar system, that's where I hide, I am similar to Earth, I'm spun, find out more when this song is done. My name is Kepler. 452B, also known as Earth 2.0, yeah that's me. I may support life within the Goldilocks zone while orbiting a sun-like star like yours at home. Let's see, where am I? I'm 1,402 light years away from the solar system your Earth does play. I was discovered by the Kepler Space Telescope on July 23rd, 2015 by NASA with hope. Though a study in 2018 by Fergal Mullally, I have not been proven to exist statistically but if I do exist I would be potentially the first rocky super earth planet you will see if life did exist on me it would be because of my orbit around my sun like star that would be the cause I orbit in a place called the Goldilocks zone that's a habitable zone of sun like stars I do roam my name is Kepler 452b also known as Earth 2.0 Yeah, that's me I may support life within the Goldilocks zone While orbiting a sun-like star like yours at home I have a probable mass five times that of the Earth Though that's a rough estimate from astronomers, of course I probably have many active volcanoes Due to my higher mass and density compared to the Earth you call home I have an orbit of 385 days, which is 20 more days than your Earth's year, I can say. The star that I orbit is called Kepler 452. It's the Earth-like star that I orbit, this is true. Maybe someday you can visit me and make history, but for now I'm known as a rocky super Earth, that's what I be. My name is Kepler 452b, also known as Earth 2.0. Yeah, that's me. I may support life within the Goldilocks zone while orbiting a sun-like star like yours at home. My name is Kepler 452b, also known as Earth 2.0. Yeah, that's me. I may support life within the Goldilocks zone while orbiting a sun-like star like yours at home. I'm an exoplanet orbiting the star, Caro 7 you see. In the constellation of Monoceros, my name is Caro 7B. I was first detected photometrically in 2009 by the French led Caro mission in the month of February. Discovered by a French astrophysicist named Daniel Rowan, working as the director of research emeritus at the CNRS. It's going on. I used to be the smallest exoplanet until the discovery of the exoplanet that was given the name Kepler's 37. Okay.
position similar to Jupiter, you're super giant. I'm likely to be tidally locked to my parent star. I'm extremely dark and completely bizarre. My name is T-R-E-S dash to B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. This is a total solar eclipse. Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface. This is a total solar eclipse. My totality is on inspiring, so don't miss this. This celestial event is called a solar eclipse. Let me tell you about it so you can understand all this. A solar eclipse is caused by the moon, that is me. I pass in between the sun and the earth till black is what you see. Here are several stages and some visual tips that you can use to recognize a total solar eclipse. Stage one is called a partial eclipse is when the sun's disk is partially blocked by the moon like this stage two is called bailey's beats which are bright spots of light it's when low lying valleys on the moon's edge allow sunlight through that's right stage three is sometimes called the diamond ring this stage is key in which marks the last few seconds before totality the last bit of sunlight that is able to shine through the low lying valleys creates a single of light on the side of the moon the fourth and most important stage is called totality when the moon completely covers the disk of the sun this is what you see then comes the final stages in which the sun will grow a crescent on the opposite side of the bailey's beads which once had shown but before you see this celestial event there's a few safety precautions for eye injuries to prevent this is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface. This is a total solar eclipse. My totality is on inspiring, so don't miss this. On Monday, August 21st, 2017, there's a total solar eclipse North America will see. But the totality you want to see can only be observed from Lincoln Beach, Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina, so I've heard. The path of totality is 70 miles wide, they say, seen in 14 states in the continental U.S. of A. Totality lasts a few minutes, so be sure to be there, and please use special safety glasses so your vision isn't impaired. You can buy these special solar eclipse glasses online, so protect your eyes from the sun while having a great time. This is a total solar eclipse. Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface. This is a total solar eclipse. My totality is on inspiring, so don't miss this. A solar eclipse has several areas we need to discuss. Take a look at this picture to learn each part is a must. Here's a penumbra, a partially shaded outer region. Surrounding the umbra, a fully shaded inner part that's darkened. A partial eclipse is what you're seeing right here. When only part of the luminary of a celestial body is darkened there. This is a total which I travel on the Earth's surface. This is a total solar eclipse. My totality is on inspiring, so don't miss this. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You'll learn about them in the 
this song and why you should care. The sun is a ball of plasma like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field. When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field, it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots. They are real. This energy released is caused by magnetic knots. When one of these knots breaks, it releases solar flares so you are taught. Solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one. These solar flares race through space at the speed of light, creating a solar proton storm. These storms are no delight. When millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere, these storms are called coronal mass ejections as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power. The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm. When a CME is too big, it creates a solar superstorm that occur once or twice a century, so you've been warned. If a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age, it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun, I do say. If this type of CME traveled across space towards the earth it would reach you in one day yeah that's fast for what that is worth its shock wave would compress earth's magnetic field making it frail the two magnetic fields would merge stretching earth's field into a thin tail this stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore when it snaps it releases explosive energy towards the earth that it stored this creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm Normally, no living thing on Earth would even know it had formed. The only thing it would affect is your electricity. Because you rely on this so much, it would disrupt human life, you see. Because Earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers, this geomagnetic storm would shut down the power. Humans would be overturned. If one of these storms hit the Earth, electricity and internet would not work. All things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks. Computers would wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices, no refrigerators or any other household appliances. Even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms, their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned. Engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids until the solar storm passes Earth, preventing blackouts we forbid. Humans need to prepare for these types of storms to prevent being thrown back to the stone age before they form. A cool event humans experience from any solar storm is the aurora borealis at the two poles is where they perform. I'm the life-giving sun, you all need me to live, but I am unpredictable, so solar storms I give. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare you learn about them in this song and why you should care my name is 55 can create also known as jensen i'm a super earth you see i'm an exoplanet orbit of my host star named Copernicus. Here's what they know about me this far. I was discovered in the month of August on the 30th day in the year of 2004 I convey. I was nicknamed the Diamond Planet due to research that suggests I have a carbon rich composition underneath my surface. I was discovered by a female astronomer. She goes by the name of Barbara MacArthur. Detection method used by astronomers to find me is a method called radial velocity. My host star Copernicus or 55 can create is from Earth, a 40 light year trip away. My host star is a G type star similar to your sun. You know I'm 0.01544 AU from my star's glow. My name is 55. Can create, also known as J. Planet in the orbit of my host star named Capri.
and a kiss Here's what they know about me this far My mass is about 8.08 that of the earth I take 0.7 days to complete one orbit of my star for what that's worth I belong to the constellation called Cancer Here is an example of what it looks like Of this I am sure In 2016 in the month of February NASA's Hubble telescope detected two gases on me Those gases were hydrogen and helium With hints of hydrogen cyanide while well, it was on its run I am tidally locked just like your moon That means I have a dark side, you won't see it too soon Silicates in my atmosphere would condense Into clouds on my tidally locked dark side I commence Reflecting the lava from below So there would be a sparkle in my dark skies that don't show My day side temperatures average about 4200 degrees That is in Fahrenheit, if you please There are more planets orbiting my host star We will visit those soon, keep it on your radar My name is 55, Cancrete, also known as J Star named Copernicus. Here's what they know about me this far. I am TOI 561B, one of the oldest rocky planets discovered. You'll see TOI 561B. I am an exoplanet. So known as Super Earth, soon you'll also agree. I am TOI 561B. My surface is extremely hot due to my star's proximity. TOI 561B was discovered in the year of 2020 by the Transmitting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. Also known as TESS, it sees things way out of sight. TOI 561B was discovered in the Milky Way galaxy with an estimated age of 13 billion years. The Milky Way galaxy is super old, I do agree. My estimated age is 10 billion years. That makes me one of the oldest rocky planets discovered with cheer. I am around 280 light years away. I'm a third bigger than the Earth, I do convey. I get close when I orbit my G-type star. It takes me 10.5 hours to orbit once because I'm not too far. My mass is 1.59 of the Earth's. That's one of the reasons I'm so unique for what that's worth. Lauren Wise's team is researching me. She's the team leader at the University of Hawaii. It's unlikely any life can survive on me With a surface temperature of 3630 degrees That's roughly twice as hot as molten lava on Earth In Fahrenheit since my discovery and my birth I'm tidally locked to my G-type star in motion I have a permanent day side that's likely home to a magma ocean I am TOI 561B One of the oldest rocky planets discovered you'll see TOI 561B I am an exoplanet in the Milky Way galaxy TOI 561B Also known as Super Earth Soon you'll also agree I am TOI 561B My surface is extremely hot due to my star's proximity We're the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Telescope, that's me. We're here to tell you about us and what we can see. After decades of planning and research, I was finally finished.
wished and launched in 1990 as NASA had wished. I orbit 340 miles above Earth's surface to do my thing. Powered by solar power collected by my two solar powered wings. I'm the length of a large school bus and weigh as much as two elephants, making more than a million observations while traveling five miles per second. I take sharp pictures of objects in the sky, such as galaxies, planets, and stars, and transmit them back to Earth for you to see. Earth's telescopes are blocked by the atmosphere to see light from space. I orbit above this atmosphere to give a clear view of my star chase. My achievements are pinning down the age of the universe, and I discovered two moons of Pluto, Nix, and Hydra, of course. I've helped determine the rate of which the universe is expanding in whole, and discovered nearly every major galaxy is anchored by a black hole. The James Webb Telescope is an infrared space observatory launched in 2021 for space exploration you see i'm here to probe the cosmos and uncover the history of the universe from the big bang and alien planet formation and much more of course i'll take 30 days to travel a million miles to my home that's permanent orbiting the sun aligned with the earth to explore space is my intent when nasa built me 10 billion dollars was my cost my impressive primary mirror is 6.5 meters across it has 18 segments in a honeycomb structure i say and i I am powered by an onboard solar array. The solar array provides me with 2,000 watts of electrical power and a propulsion system to maintain my observatory orbit by the hour. I have enough propellant on board to last 10 years of operation to give a better understanding of the universe to every nation. I can see 13 billion light years back in time, which is 100 million years after the universe was born. I do refine. We're important because we give a view of space that is clear orbiting above earth's foggy atmosphere we're the hubble space telescope and the james webb telescope that's me we're here to tell you about us and what we can see estimated visible diameter of a hundred to two hundred thousand light years across me i'm the milky way this song is about facts of my galaxy i'm not the biggest but i'm the one you call home actually i am the milky way the galaxy you are all a part of your solar system's a small part of me here's more of me you love your galaxy is a gravitationally bound collection of stars and a spiral swirling through space that's what you know about me this far i am one and about two in this observable universe let's give some examples of my size in the coming verse i do have a radius which is measured from my center to the edge of me which in light years measures 52,850 when you measure me from one edge across my entirety I'm about a hundred thousand light years across as you can plainly see I do probably contain 100 to 400 billion stars you know that's an estimate that humans created but there could be more to show to give you an example of my size well we'll look to my neighbor and see the spectacle goes by the name of the andromeda galaxy if you measure the andromeda across from one side to the other it's a 
about 220,000 light years wide. It's my big brother. This is IC1101 Galaxy. I will now share. It spans as much as 4 million light years. That's a lot bigger if we're compared. There are Kea is a good example. I am part of its hard to muster. The Lani Kea supercluster is thought to be in size 520 million light years, an estimate humans had comprised. The next time you think Earth is the center of the universe, you Remember, you're just a speck floating in trillions of galaxies in a space unknown. This is the Oort Cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort Cloud. Which is a theoretical concept Astronomers has spun The Oort Cloud Is the most distant region in the solar system It's much farther than the Kuiper Belt We're filling you with this wisdom the Oort Cloud supposedly a giant spherical shell Surrounding the rest of the solar system as you're propelled There could be billions or even trillions of objects Within the Oort Cloud, that's what NASA projects This Oort Cloud could be the source of most comets This is thought because of a comet's long period orbit the distance of this Oort cloud from your sun is estimated to be 2,000 to 100,000 AU on its run. One astronomical unit or AU is the distance between Earth and the sun like you see on your screen. This is the Oort cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort cloud. Which is a theoretical concept Astronomers had spun The first description of the Oort Cloud was in 1950 by Jan Hendrik Or the Dutch astronomer you see This Oort Cloud's divided into two regions you see here A dish-shaped inner Oort Cloud and an outer Oort Cloud sphere There's never been a confirmed direct observation of the Oort Cloud so Continues to be speculation. This region's thought to have formed 4.6 billion years ago after the formation of the planets in the solar system, though. This is the Oort Cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort Cloud, which is a theoretical concept astronomers had spun. This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt In the outer solar system is where its presence is felt This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt Extending from the orbit of Neptune so its ice doesn't melt The Kuiper Belt is beyond Neptune's orbit One of the largest structures in our solar system, I admit It was discovered after Pluto was in 1930 But 1990 named it officially. The Kuiper Belt's a region of leftovers that are icy from the solar system's early history. This is thought to be one of the main sources of comets, but the Kuiper Belt is mainly made of icy objects. There's lots of objects here and also rocky effects. Astronomers generally accept as the known door planets. Orcus and Pluto both exist within the Kuiper Belt. Hame also make their presence felt. There are hundreds of thousands of objects in the Kuiper Belt region that have been there since the solar system began. This 
Venus regions 30 astronomical units or 50 AU from the sun. That's the estimated size of the Kuiper belt on its icy run. The Kuiper belt's a trans-Neptunian region in the solar system. It's smaller than the asteroid belt, but much larger as it's fun. This Kuiper belt's named after the Dutch astronomer Gerard Kuiper, though he did not credit its existence, I am sure. The Kuiper belt's far past Neptune's orbit, it's felt. But the Oort cloud extends even further, circling the Kuiper Belt. Lots of Kuiper Belt objects have moons that orbit daily. The most well-known are Pluto, Haumea, Quora, and also Aries. There are more than a trillion comets within the Kuiper Belt. Halley's Comet is the most famous on Earth, or presence is felt. This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt. In the outer solar system is where its presence is felt. This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt, extending from the orbit of Neptune so its ice doesn't melt. Earth has a second moon, it's me, provisionally designated, 2016 HO3, Kamu Abrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may change with new facts that we can avoid i was first spotted in april of 2016 by pan stars asteroid survey telescope you now see this telescope is located on haleakala in hawaii which is all Observatory. When I was discovered orbiting the Earth in a weird way, Kamu'u Alava was the name they gave me, even though it is extremely hard to say. I am very small compared to Earth's moon, measuring 164 feet across. I'm tiny, it's true. I circle the Earth in a repeating corkscrew like trajectory. Never closer than 40 to 100 times the 239,000 mile distance of your moon, you see. I'm odd and this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye like other asteroids do. I'm a quirky satellite and this is true. Because of this, researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free. Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment. It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree. When I was ejected into space, I am lunar debris. I am a near-Earth object also known as NEO, part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo. I'm an object in a specific type of core orbital configuration with a planet. I'm called a quasi-satellite. I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it. Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 HO3, Kamu Abrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. The Apollo mission brought humans to the moon. The first flight was in the 1960s. We hope to go back soon. The Apollo missions were a NASA program and set a major spaceflight milestone for all humans. The Apollo program was conceived in 1960 during Dwight D. Eisenhower's presidency. Then the Apollo program started in 1961 and consisted of 11 total spaceflights and missions. Apollo on this man.
rehearsal of the moon landing was in 69 on Apollo 10. It was a great success with 31 orbits around the Earth's bend. Apollo 11 was the first land and walk on the moon in 69. Neil Armstrong was the first to step foot on the moon for humankind. In 1969, Apollo 12 was the first precision landing on the moon, which was also successful instead of I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space. I fly around the world every 90 minutes. I orbit the Earth 16 times in 24 hours. That's legit. I'm 357 feet long from end to end. And am I after the moon? I'm the second brightest object in your sky. I have two bathrooms on board, there's also one gym. I have six sleeping quarters and six spaceship docks for the win. Here's a brief history about how I came to be. Pay attention to my incredible collaborative construction story. The idea of the space station was science fiction until the 1940s. The structure might be built by many nations. In the 1950s, designs of spaceships and space stations began to develop with the beginning of the space age and it gained traction. The first rudimentary station was created in 1969 by the linking of two Russian Soyuz vehicles in line. In 1984, the U.S. President Ronald Reagan told NASA to build the ISS for many nations. Then in 1998, the construction had begun of the only international space station. That year, the first segment of the ISS launched in November 20th by the Russian proton rocket named Zarya. It's no myth. The Unity node from the U.S. launched December 4th by the space shuttle Endeavour set it on its course. The Endeavour met Zarya in orbit with the Unity node to make the first connection with the Russian segment, you know. In the year 2000, the first crew to man the space shuttle adrift was Bill Shepard, Yuri Katanko, and Sergei Krikalev. The U.S. lab module was added in 2001. Then the European and Japanese lab joined in 2008, and we're not done. The ISS consists of 50 nations, Canada, Japan, and the Russian Federation. The United States and the European Space Agency. They are Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, and Italy. The Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden, Switzerland, and the famed United Kingdom. Maybe you will have the chance to visit me someday and be another part of the ISS and its history. I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space. Alpha 
Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri B officially Toliman I trust. Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars. We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far. Alpha Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass and 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class. Alpha Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know. At 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown. We orbit around a common center or around one another so you'd understand better. With an orbital period of almost 80 years by far. And from a distance we're so close we look like one star. I'm Proxima Centauri, a small and faint red dwarf star. You cannot see me with the naked eye though I'm the closest star by far. I'm about 4.24 light years from the earth and I'm the closest star to the sun for what that is worth. Discovered in 1915 by astronomer Robert Eins, I'm sure. In South Africa at the Union Observatory in Johannesburg. My Latin name Proxima Centauri means when this is defined. The near a star of Centaurus, that's all that's assigned. We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A, a Officially Rigel Centaurus, Alpha Centauri B. Officially Toliman I trust, Centauri C. Officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big, of course, now here we come. I'm Segway 2, I'm a dwarf spheroidal galaxy, situated in the constellation of Aries. My radius is 110.89 light years, they say. Discovered in 2009 by Sloan Digital Sky Survey. My name's Messier32, a dwarf early type galaxy, am I? 2.65 million light years from Earth, I fly. I was discovered in the year of 1749. I am 6,500 light years across, and that's just fine. I'm small, Magellanic Cloud, or Nubicula Minor, a dwarf irregular. Galaxy, there's nothing finer. I'm near the Milky Way, but not a stone's toss. My diameter's about 7,000 light years across. I'm Triangulum, a spiral galaxy. You see, sometimes I'm referred to as a pinwheel galaxy. I was discovered officially in 1764. I'm 50,000 light years across. This info is now yours. I'm the Whirlpool Galaxy, also called Messier 51. I'm a spiral galaxy, my arms reach out well I'm spun. I was first discovered in the year of 1773. 76,000 light years is the distance across me. I'm the Milky Way galaxy, a gigantic spiral disk with a bright central bulge that you can't miss. I'm 100,000 light years, your sun is 8kpc from my center. On what is known as Orion's arm, it's a real bender. I'm Hope's object, a non-typical galaxy. 
of the type known as a ring galaxy as you can see 121,000 light years across bigger than the Milky Way discovered by author Hogan 1958 there's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big of course now here we come on the cartwheel galaxy a lenticular and ring galaxy discovered by fritz wiki in 1941 i'm 150,000 light years across my beauty is number one i am m101 also known as the pinwheel galaxy discovered by pierre michon in 1781 if you please i'm 170,000 light years across nearly twice the size of the milky way now that's quite a toss i'm the andromeda galaxy a spiral galaxy i say in the nearest major galaxy to your milky way my name stems from the constellation of andromeda i'm 220,000 light years across i'll be seeing ya i'm ngc 6872 also known as condor galaxy i'm a large part spiral galaxy i'm sure you'd agree discovered in 1835 by john herschel the boss i'm very large at 700,000 light years across i'm the giant temple galaxy a disrupted part spiral you see i was discovered in the year of 2018 i'm 10 times the size of the milky way that's extremely large my friend i'm 1 million light years long from end to end i'm ic 1101 a supergiant elliptical galaxy i'm one of the largest known galaxies found in your universe you see discovered in the year of 1790 by john herschel six million light years across with stars i am full there's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big of course now here we come I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top ten brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red supergiant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so I received the name Beetlejuice in 1836 by Sir John Herschel, an astronomer and a great scientist I'm the second brightest star in the Orion constellation after the star Rigel, we're seen from any of Earth's nations. My diameter's about 700 times that of your sun, and I'm 640 light years from the Earth, that's quite a run. But my surface temperature 6,000 degrees in Fahrenheit, cooler than your sun's surface 10,000 degrees, yeah that's right. I'm so massive if you replaced your sun with me, I'd reach past the orbit of Jupiter, I'm gigantic you see. I'm considered a young star at just 10 million years old soon to explode into a supernova scientists say so i am beetlejuice i'm nearing the end of my life one of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky i am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so a red super giant is an aging giant star that has consumed its core supply of hydrogen fuel that's what they are helium has a Accumulated in my core so well And hydrogen's undergoing nuclear fusion in my outer shells When my outer shells expand I take on a red color Because I'm cooler than I was I'm happy to discover Red supergiants are the largest known stars in the universe And I'm expected to supernova onto the next verse During fusion heavier atoms are created Until my core is iron That's when I'll run out of fuel without even been trying. When that happens to a star as massive as me, the entire star collapses and explodes as a supernova, you see. When I do supernova, I'll create quite a sight. Some predict I'll even look like your full moon's brightest light. The radiation I put off from becoming a supernova wouldn't affect Earth because I'm 640 light years over. I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life. One of the top 10 and brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so
My 62 moons, 53 are named. I am a gas giant, all astronomers claim. 36,184 is my radius and miles for you to explore. 10.44 meters, that's per second you drop. That's my gravity pulling towards my surface top. 10 hours and 39 minutes long is a day on my surface. Let's sing this song. I am Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun. I'm known for my rings by everyone. I'm the second largest planet in our solar system. Please come sing along until my teachings are done. Takes 29 years for me to orbit the sun. And my rings are made up of rock and icy chunks. 886 million miles away is my distance from the sun. That is why I'm Chile. Hydrogen and helium are what I'm mostly made of. And my atmosphere from the surface above. 26.7 is the amount of degrees. To spin on my axis, I'm so cold that you freeze I am Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun I'm known for my rings by everyone I'm the second largest planet in our solar system Please come sing along until my teachings are done I am Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun I'm known for my rings by everyone I'm the second largest planet in our solar system Please come sing along Adventure on 
our space journey on a sea. Now we're My orbit around the sun is nearly circular, you know About 285 Earth years is one year on my surface though Astronomers think my color's moderately red And that I'm 1250 kilometers in diameter They had said I'm about 6 billion kilometers from Earth It would take 100,000 years to walk to me for what it is worth Scientists were shocked to find signs of crystalline ice And ammonia hydrate on my surface Dwarf planet candidate In the outreaches of the Kuiper Belt where I orbit My name is Quora There is so much to learn about me As we adventure on our space journey on a sea I have one known satellite Its name is way way February 22nd 2007's when you learned of it Michael Lee Brown did discover my moon From images taken in February 2006 That is true My name is Sedna, a dwarf planet candidate. I'm in the furthest reaches of our solar system in orbit. On November 14th in 2003, the Palomar Observatory is who discovered me. The names of astronomers are Michael Brown, Chad Trujillo, and Dave Rabinowitz are how I was found. My name Sedna means Inuit goddess of the sea, which derived from a young arctic woman's grim Eskimo story. I'm a large minor planet, that is what I will be, until I meet the criteria for dwarf status you see. My name is Sedna, a dwarf planet candidate, I'm in the furthest reaches of our solar system in orbit. My distance from the sun in my furthest orbit is about 84 billion miles, I barely see it. If you saw the sun from that distance you wouldn't squint, it would be so small it could be blocked with the head of a pin. I'm the second reddest object in our solar system, the first reddest is Mars, yeah I am second to him. I am three fourths the size of our dwarf planet Pluto, and I'm believed to live in the inner or cloud you know. My name is Sedna, a dwarf planet candidate, I'm in the furthest reaches of our solar system in orbit. The time I'm thought to take to orbit our sun once is 10,500 Earth years, yeah that is a long run. It's predicted the last time I was closest to our sun, Earth was coming out of its last ice age, now that isn't fun. I live in the coldest known region of our solar system, it's minus 240 degrees Celsius where I'm from. My name is Sedna, a dwarf planet candidate, I'm in the furthest reaches of solar system in orbit. My name is Sedna, a dwarf planet candidate. I'm in the furthest reaches of our solar system in orbit. Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. 
It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. The lithosphere consists of the upper mantle and the crust. They're part of the geosphere on Earth, which makes these plates adjust. Tectonic plates are irregularly shaped slabs of solid rock, composed of oceanic and continental lithosphere bedrock. There are three tectonic boundaries running between tectonic plates. Divergent, convergent, and transform now aren't those names just great? the plates out in the sea. Convergent boundaries move toward one another and destructively collide. That's where you'd find those earthquakes and volcanoes do reside. Transform boundaries are two plates that slide past one another. The San Andreas Fault lines the best example of this to discover. Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes Let's look at this topological map of the Earth that we live on. In the seven major tectonic plates we're learning in this song. The biggest is the Pacific Plate. It lies beneath the Pacific Ocean. Nicknamed the Ring of Fire due to all the volcanic emotion. The North American Plate is the next on the list of major plates. It includes both continental and oceanic crust I indicate. Next we have the Eurasian plate, also a major tectonic grate. Two large continents it includes are Europe and Asia today. Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. Then the African plate is next. It does straddle the vast equator. Most of Africa's continents in it, that's an easy way to locate her. of the major plates you know that includes South America and Atlantic Ocean seabed below. Talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. Talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes